Hi Tiger fans, I'm Nathan Brown and we're here for the Bingle Recruitment Zone on richmondfc.com.au. I'm joined by Richmond General Manager of Football, Dan Richardson. And Dan, the footy season's over, but your real busy time starts now. Yeah, it certainly does uh, for, for all clubs at this time of year. The, uh, the AFL has uh, extended the season, haven't they? A lot of speculation around this time of year and obviously all clubs working hard like we are to improve our list for the following year. Well, what have you identified that what you need for the list? I mean, it was a, it was a great second half of the season, but uh, what have you guys identified that you need? Oh, look, there's, yeah, there's two aspects to that. I mean, we certainly had a good second half of the season, but obviously won't be blind, blinded by that. And look, we still want to uh, get some midfield depth into our group, and that's probably the main priority, and, and also some outside speed with that. So, um, look, we feel as though um, most of that can be, uh, yeah, that strategy can work through us acquiring some players through the draft. Um, that's been a strategy we've had in place for a few years, and we're happy to stick to that, but that's not to say during a trade period that we won't look at all avenues to. Uh, to, uh, to get that improvement. Well, in the first week of the trade period, Richmond seemed pretty quiet, but their name is bobbing up more and more over the last week with Jason Winderlich and possibly even Levi Greenwood linked to the footy club. Yeah, look, it probably won't go anywhere with Levi, but certainly Jason, there's, uh, there's certainly some interest there. Um, he certainly feels a need that we have for some pace and we think that he can um, provide that for us. But look, there's a bit of water to go under the bridge as there always is. Um, we're hopeful perhaps of, of him being able to be acquired as a free agent, but it looks like he's contracted to Essendon by way of an option clause, but we'll work our way through that over the coming days. And that's the same sort of clause that Nick Del Sano had in his contract. So uh, would you have to give it something to Essendon for that? Yeah, similar clause to Nick Del Santo. So, no, ultimately with an option clause like that, it would require Essendon or the, the club in question to release the player. Uh, that looks like it's unlikely to happen at this stage. And, uh, and then the other option is a trade, but that's probably not an avenue that we're keen to go, to go down the path of at this point. So the next month you must be just on the phone to other clubs, to other recruiting managers, to other general managers, just trying to sort out deals. You'll be on the phone 24-7. Yeah, a fair bit of time on the phone, but not just myself. Obviously, Blair Hartley, our list manager and recruiting team. Um, you know, most of that's driven by Blair, but certainly you know, quite a few internal meetings as well. Um, Dim is back from holidays today, so he's keen to get a bit of an update for, uh, for the next couple of days. But it's also about just keeping everyone internally on the same page and making sure that we're, um, we're sticking to the strategy that we're on. Yeah. Uh, first day of trade at Etihad Stadium. Tell us what's that like. All, all the other clubs there, all the recruiting managers, some of the coaches are there. I imagine there's a hell of a lot of big egos in that room too. How does it all unfold? Not many coaches there these days, only probably three or four. I saw Brad Scott there. Yeah, Scotty was there, Leon Cameron, um, Lepper, who left us last year, but Lepper was there, so that was entertaining, having some discussions with uh, someone who was at your club last year. So, um, look, in the age of full-time list managers, there's probably a lot of the discussions already had been had prior to that first day, but look, it's an opportunity just to catch up and see where everybody's at. Um, some discussions... I guess are a little bit more fruitful than others. Others are just really touching base and just making sure everyone's clear on where each other's lists are at, um, how many draft picks that they're looking to have and what their strategy through the trade period is going to be and, and obviously then looking at that and, and whether or not there's an opportunity you know, to match your strategy with theirs and, uh, and get some activity going. So some of the discussions are fairly short. Uh, some are, are in a little bit more depth. The main option is obviously some outside pace and another midfielder. Um, I think I asked you about Mitch Robinson on Trade Radio a couple of days ago. Uh, he's a big bull of a player. Is he someone that you'd entertain or, or not so much? We haven't entertained Mitch at this stage, Brownie, no. Um, but look, yeah, you're right, midfield depth is still the direction that we're going in. But um, as I said, more than likely we, we feel confident that the draft pool this year and there's some quality midfielders in this year's draft and it's a, it's a fairly deep pool that we think we can get some quality players through there but equally you know, that all requires to be patient on our, uh, you know, on our list build strategy and, and, and obviously you know, draft picks will take a little while to develop um, but that's you know, by and large the direction we look like going in. You speak about the, uh, the draft and the combine was last week, you got a chance to go and see some of the players, interview some of the players, is there any players there that could step straight in and play our football straight away? Oh, look, yeah, there's a number, I think, and uh, there were some really good testing results. And, yeah, you're right, you know, we, we got the opportunity to interview sort of, you know, well over 20-odd players. Um, and a lot of that work had been done during the year also in addition to that. So, um, yeah, look, there's some quality midfield depth there. There's no doubt about that. I mean, 
a lot's been said of the likes of you know Christian Petrarca and Angus Brayshaw and some of these players. They'll, they'll probably be gone before our first pick, but there's some other quality midfielders there. And um, as we see every year, some some of those players can come in immediately and, and have an impact. Um, others it might take a year or two, but there's no doubt there's there's depths of sort of 35, 40 players there that we're really confident can um, can really help us, and we're just going to make the right decisions when when the draft comes. And we talk about the super drafts of when uh, I, I guess Judd's draft, when Luke Hodge, Luke Ball was there. How does this draft compare to previous years? Is it a really deep draft, or is it you know the top 10 really good and then it falls away? How, how does it rate? Yeah, most of the recruiting guys, a lot of them, like Francis Jackson, been around a lot longer than me in this caper. But their their general philosophy feeling is that um, the depth is really strong. Um, gee, if you, if you had players of the quality of Luke Hodge and Luke Ball and Chris Judd, that'd be handy. Um, perhaps not quite the top end quality there, but but certainly most clubs seem to be pretty comfortable with being able to you know, having picks in, into the 40s and 50s even, which is uh, which yeah suggests that it's got some real depth. Dan Richardson, thanks very much for joining us. It's been a great insight. No worries, thanks. Make sure you check out all the latest trade, free agency and draft news at richmondfc.com.au at the Bingo Recruitment Zone. See you next time.